What's up YouTube? Whistling Canine here in the man cave. Want to share with you a solar project that I've been putting together. Solar for me is just something that's exciting and I think everybody should be involved. You'd ask me why solar and I'd ask you why not. I'm sure we all work for a person who in turn gives you money and you turn around and you take that money and you go pay your power bill and you go buy food with it. But there's certainly ways of making your own power and growing your own food, but moving on from there. I'd also like to say that I'm not sponsored or affiliated or paid by any of the products or companies that you're about to see today. And this is just a budget system. It's not going to power your whole house. I got this solar panel for Christmas and I asked for it and I bought some batteries and I had an old jump box sitting around and voila I had a solar system solar power system but the good thing about solar is it's highly module or modular you can mix and match components you don't need the same type of batteries or the same type of panels I'm sure it'll be more efficient to do it that way but it's not necessary you can mix and match you can do whatever you want you can upgrade you can even downgrade if you want to you can get better quality components you can r j just run what you got uh, which is what I'm doing here with this system um, starting with this battery box this was something that I had sitting in the garage that was about to be junked honestly I believe I've had this almost 10 years. It's got to be getting close to that. Um, and it has, this is a jump box you, that people use to jump their cars when you ran out of battery or left your lights on or whatever. And it has a battery inside. And just like all batteries, they're consumables. They're not made or designed to last forever. They're going to go bad. And just like every other battery and everything, this one went bad too. And I was about to throw it out when I discovered that as long as you have these leads hooked to a battery and this main breaker on it powers up all the accessories so i still can use the inverter i can even use the compressor that's attached and these are always handy the little 12 volt cigarette lighter adapter sockets shoot i got these for the dollar store those things work perfect for charging your little cell phones but um what i discovered inside when i took the battery out which is a uh, sealed lead acid unit, 12 volt, 19 amp hour unit. But what I discovered when I opened this thing up and to take the battery out was that the wiring that comes into this, the power that comes into this off the jump leads, just runs in line and the battery is connected in line with that. So as long as you have this main breaker on, that power from the jump leads still connect to all these accessories. Now, I was going to just replace this battery. Um, this is a battery designed for jumping applications. It's designed to uh, charge slowly and discharge quickly. For solar, you want the opposite. Uh, this direct replacement was $79. And if I remember right, this was $100. So I wasn't about to just go do that. I would buy a whole new jump box if that was the situation. And I don't, this is not going to be my permanent inverter. This is just to get the the uh, project going. Uh, I plan to upgrade to probably a 1,000 watt sine wave or maybe a 1,500 watt sine wave. Just something just good enough to run a fridge or a microwave in a pinch. Uh, that's about the most wattage that I would really be needing to run in in an emergency situation would be maybe the microwave or a coffee maker or something like that. <clears throat> but uh, this will get upgraded sooner or later. But for right now, we're just going to roll with what we got. Now, I got this box from the local big box store for about 12 bucks on sale. It's pretty sturdy. 
Um, I wouldn't want to be lugging these batteries around in it all the time because these are actually 64 pounds a piece. They're full of lead inside of there. They're very heavy. So all together, this is 120 pounds in this box alone. But this box seemed nice and sturdy. It's got these latches on it, which uh, for, a, for a $12 box, I thought it was a great deal. These batteries I got from a local battery store. Uh, I'm sure there's one near you. I was surprised that there was uh, places like this, but I just looked online and, and found that uh, I could get these and didn't have to pay for the price of shipping. You know, I can imagine the price of shipping something that's 120 pounds. But uh, these were 120 bucks out the door a piece. And these are 6 volt, 230 amp hour batteries. Now, if you paid attention to what I said earlier, this is a 12 volt unit. Now, how do I get from 12 volt from two 6 volt batteries is you run them in series. You pick off of a positive to a negative and when you connect these this now comes one becomes one 12 volt cell but it would still remain at 230 amp hours because you're doubling the voltage now if you were to run them in parallel where you would connect these two and then just draw off of here per se or here off of this negative and positive then this would be still six volt but you would double your amp hours <clears throat> now to connect these I went to the local uh, car audio store where they install car stereos and amplifiers and cell phones and alarms and all that and uh, talked to one of the installers there in the back and he had this wire just sitting on the floor and he gave me four foot of it for the price of one foot for just six bucks you know he was probably going to throw it away or didn't have much use for it or whatever, but I recommend going to the car audio place instead of the big box stores. <clears throat> I went to a, quite a few big box stores looking for four gauge wire, and all of them had the filament inside of the wire that was very, very thick. For DC, you don't want thick wire elements inside of the shielding here. Um, the one that I was looking at at the big box store had maybe like six or seven filaments in there. You want as many as you can possibly get in there. If I'm not mistaken, the properties of an electron as it flows through a line like this is the electron bounces from line to line. So you want as many lines in this wire filament as you can possibly get for the most efficient transmission of DC power. <clears throat> Now, when I would, ideally, you would run a sealed lead acid battery for, especially if you're going to try and store this battery box in your house or in your attic or, you know, in a shed or something like that, somewhere enclosed, you would ideally want to run a sealed lead acid battery or AGM or something like that. The advantage of it is they don't off-gas as much. And by off-gassing, I mean when you're charging batteries, especially batteries like flooded acid batteries, there's a liquid down in there. And when you charge these, part of that liquid turns into hydrogen and it vents out of these caps. And when it does that, it fills the air with a acrid sulfur type smell. And that's hydrogen. Now, that hydrogen is not safe to breathe in, breathe in large quantities, and it's highly flammable. If this box were filled with hydrogen, if I have this box closed and I was charging these batteries, and it gets filled up with hydrogen, and somehow, I mean, we are talking about electrical components here. Somehow a wire became loose, and it sparked in there. This would basically just be a bomb. So just beware of that. That's that's the disadvantage of, of these. But when I priced a 12 volt, 200 plus amp hour unit, it was almost $600. So for me, it was just a no brainer to go with uh, these and just deal with the off gassing. I plan on doing that by cutting some inlet holes on the bottom of this all the way around it 
and getting a um, dryer hose like out of the back, off the back of your dryer and using a 12 volt computer fan that I have sitting around and I'm going to vent this gas out of the out of my attic to an existing vent and uh, that way just have a reliable way to make sure that those gases don't build up anywhere in my attic or in this box here and potentially blow the roof off my attic <laughs> just wouldn't be good um, now I also decided to go with just simplify the fittings on here and get these little copper units that would basically bolt onto here and you put your wire in there and just cinch it down <clears throat> all right on to so the you can see, solar panel. I went with the Renogy line of solar panels. Uh, this is the 100 watt monocrystalline starter kit. Comes with a uh, charge controller, wiring, mounting brackets, a, a lot of things to simplify your installation. Let's open her up and take a look at her. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Looks like we got our charge controller here. This is the basic charge controller. I'll eventually upgrade this to a uh, MPPT. This is a PWM and this is just their base controller just to get started. With one panel you really can't take advantage of an MPPT anyway. But uh, later on I will upgrade this. Uh, it would have been nice if this one had uh, the optional load output here because those ones you can program to come on at certain times or come on when the solar panel is charging and that would have been nice to hook up the exhaust fan to exhaust the hydrogen out of the box so right when the battery panel start charging the batteries the exhaust fan would kick on and that would just be an ideal situation to, to vent the gas out because these batteries really only off gas when you're charging uh, we got the 20 feet of wire with the MC4 connectors. These are really neat connectors because they're waterproof and uh, it's just going to simplify ins installation a lot to just be able to pop those suckers right in there and get on going with your system. It also has uh, two 8 foot leads that connect from your charge controller to your batteries. This is one thing I thought was really neat is the Z brackets because that's going to simplify the installation a lot. You pop these brackets on at uh, any of these holes you choose or the corners and screw them, you know, screw them in, bolt them in, wham bam, you're done. As for the panel itself, it seems very well constructed. It's solid. It doesn't feel flimsy or, or uh, flexible or anything. It feels really rigid. Also, uh, I think that they have uh, coating on the glass, which helps in the light transmission, which is uh, pretty neat. I know you probably won't get that from anything from China. But overall, it seems like a really high quality panel. All right, thanks for watching. This concludes part one of our beginner solar project. Stay tuned for part two, where we assemble all these components and do some initial testing. Once again, thanks for watching. Hope to see you back soon.